and thanks for joining us on Talk of the Town. I'm Jane Jude. Well, with the election of Drew Lachlan as mayor of Hilton Head Island in an election that involves seven candidates in unprecedented interest, there was a void in Lachlan's old seat in Ward 3. There is unprecedented interest there with five candidates vying to replace Lachlan as representative for Ward 3. And here is one of them, Ryan McAvoy. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Thank you for having me. You're a marketing consultant here on Hilton Head? Yes. What, what do you do there? Uh, basically, I started off uh, working at the booths outside locations like Walmart, Crazy Crab, Skillets, Fuddruckers. They got those little booths outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do marketing for uh, the resorts on the company. We used to do the marketing for Spinnaker Resorts. Um, but when they closed down for those 90 days, I think it was November 2001, mm -hmm. uh, we started doing it for coral resorts. And everybody over there is really sharp. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. We get to talk to you know, some of the 2.2 million visitors that come through here uh, Memorial Day through Labor Day. And you also get to encounter the locals that come to certain restaurants like every Sunday or Monday. It's a lot of fun. You get to talk to people. No manual labor. Yeah, that's very good. So you make, make your living on getting other people to buy timeshares or? Buy timeshares. Um, no, that's, that's the sales side. We just get them in the door. You know, so that's really exciting. Um, it, it's a really nice resort. It's a lot of fun. Again, like you get to talk to people. So you already promote the island. Now, you were born here? Uh, no, I was actually oh. born in uh, Tampa. I lived in Sarasota, Florida for like 11 years. Well, I felt we needed to experience the Four Seasons. And uh, on our way to Chicago, we stopped in Ohio and uh, went to school at Miami of Ohio. And uh, I've been down here since 95. 95, and you have other family in the area? Yes, yes. Uh, my mother, my father, um, and then my brother lives in Sea Pines with his, uh, his two little girls and uh, his wife. Wonderful. So you connected to the community pretty deeply. Yes. So why did you decide to run? Uh, this stuff, I love it. Uh, it really gets my crank going. Um, I think ever since I was a kid, I had up on the wall what I wanted to be. And there was, it said, a pope, a garbage man, a lot of low pressure, a judge, an actor, and a politician. It was like... Uh, That's a pretty eclectic list. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, but the pope thing didn't work out. And uh, this is my closest shot to Hollywood. It's, it's like uh, Hollywood for ugly people, politics. <laughs> and I, I've heard it described that way. That, that's very well. I want to call you ugly, so you don't have to worry. Thank there. you. Okay. Appreciate that. Okay, so um, what kind of a difference? What do you see as the biggest issues? So let, maybe we, we could talk about where your Ward 3 area is. People might not know that. Oh, uh, Shipyard, Long Cove Club, Indigo Run, Spanish Wells, Point Comfort, and... Wexford. Great. So it's kind of a little swath right through the middle of the island. That may, in fact, change, though, with re redistricting. I mean, not, not after this election, but, but sometime by 2012, with the population shifts in the island, it's possible some of that might change. So stay tuned. But, but for that right now, do you see any issues specific to that ward that don't affect the rest of the island? I think that, that the, uh, each, each area has, like, their own issues, but specifically... Just um, no, but we're, we're we're all one community, really. That's and what at, I was... at, at the end of the day, every councilman has the same vote that the mayor does. In, in the way our town council, the mayor to some degree sets the agenda, but, yes. but you know, you'll have the same vote as Drew Lachlan. Yes. Uh, for for anything that comes up, and one of the big things that's going to come up in this coming year that's certainly going to be budget sensitive is dredging. What, actually, what I noticed um, with, like, when you said specifically, you know, like, the, the, the third ward is um, I was looking over, like, I ordered the, the stuff from the, the state of Columbia. It's like, you know, it was 97, 2001, and 2005. It was like the last three, you know, elections for mayor. And um, what I've noticed is the, the turnout for mayor, it's actually, they've, it's like, so here's the, here's the island, and like Wexford would make like the top ten for voting precincts, Wexford, Shipyard, um, even, even Spanish Wells, and then, and that was in 97, and then 01, then Wexford was the only one to make it, and by the time you got to 05, the top ten voting precincts that turned out at the polls for a mayor's election was literally like Sea Pines, and it was like Hilton Head Plantation. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, so specifically, I'd like to see you know us getting back you know into the top ten for precincts and voting. So somehow Ward Three has become slightly less engaged. Yes, think? yes. 
It has. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say maybe they had a popular guy in the seat, and they figured, oh, well, it's, he's going to win anyway. I don't know. That could have been part of it. But, yeah, exactly. But anyway, well, well, there's a race now, so don't stay home on Election Day. There's, there's plenty to do. So um, dredging is one of the things that will really come up, and that is specifically Harbor Town and South Beach Marina, right. where it's, we talk about losing the heritage. We could lose yachting in Harbor Town Marina. Right, and right. So there's been a lot of people talking. Do you think what should be the town's role in facilitating that dredging? I think this is going to be the beginning of uh, an exciting adventure. And as far as the the town's role, uh, we have to move very cautiously with this one. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the the commercial. At least when I was growing up here as a kid in '95, I always remember the commercial. It's like coming to coming to Hilton Head and not going to Harbor Town is like going to Egypt. You know, not visiting the pyramids. Uh, so it's with that, you know, is, is the third ward, is, as you alluded, is, is, you know, we're all one community, you know, to, we, you know, it's part of a community we all pull together. It's like we are Harbor Town. Harbor Town, you know, is Hilton Head, you know, so it's important that we do, you know, that Harbor Town Marina is dredged. Um, I think the, the issue that I see, um, at least when I was reading over like the DNR stuff and what you were speaking to earlier is where are they going to put all this muck and this silt and all this dread, you know, all the stuff that they're dredging up. It's like where are they going to put it and who's going to pay for it? Um, as where is they're going to put it, I would say, I was reading online, they, last time they put it in these geotubes and they just drained them on land and they hauled them off to a landfill. And I was looking everywhere to see, you know, how much that would cost and I couldn't find a price on it. Um, but that, I mean, that just seems like a no-brainer. Like, why wouldn't you just, you know, haul it off to a landfill instead of worrying about, you know, mucking up the waterways, you know, and, you know, um, disrupting any kind of, you know, fishing. Yeah. Right, there's a lot of environmental concerns exactly. doing that. Well, that's, that's certainly a solution that maybe people might not know about, and that's, that should be explored. From the financial perspective, should the town be involved? I think that if... The private companies and private, you know, marinas, if they need our help and we, we see, you know, it's like it's the, it's quote unquote, it's the iconic harbor town, you know. So if we can help them, if we, if we have the financial ability to help them, I think we should. I, I, I've said this, I've said this a thousand times, it is only in giving that we truly receive. So if we can help somebody, you know, and they need our help, why wouldn't we help them? It, it, it's, to me, it sounds like a no-brainer. Well, those will be some very, very interesting discussions to be having in town council meetings in the coming year. On your website, which is ryanmacavoy.com, I think we have it on the screen for everybody, you mentioned crime and getting crime levels down. You have the ambitious goal of crime level of zero on Hilton Head. How would you help facilitate that? Well, a lot of the people that I talk to, I agree with. Low crime, low crime is not enough. You know, I, I want to strive for, for no crime. You know, when, when, if we're really like a world-class destination, you know, and people want to, you know, retire here and bring their families here on vacation and they want to move here and raise their children here, you know, we're going to be this beacon of, beacon of shining light, you know, on the East Coast, then, you know, the, the number one deterrent of crime is, is presence, presence of force. So if we need to hire, you know, a couple extra deputies to, to you know, up and down to patrol, especially in the summer, then, then so be it. That's what we need. I mean, a low crime rate, if I'm, you know, a Fortune 500 company that's cutting edge, you know, in the green sector, you know, and I want to start, you know, something in Hilton Head, you know, um, something, something really groundbreaking, cutting edge, you know, I'm going to say to my guy, hey, you want to go to Hilton Head and, you know, raise your family there and start the company? And he's like, ah, Hilton Head, I don't know, they got a high crime rate, you know, their school mm -hmm. system's terrible. You know, why would I want to do that? Well, we're, qu we're running out of time here, but one thing I want to hit on is recycling. That's an issue dear to your heart. Oh, this is my favorite. Quickly. This is my absolute favorite. Um, when I was growing up as a kid, we went up to this place in Wisconsin, Lake Manitowoc, and they had mandatory recycling. You had to put, you know, different stuff, trash bags, and like, you know, different colors, and it just completely baffled me, and like how Hilton Head didn't have mandatory recycling. I mean, we're... In essence, an eco-friendly environment, you know, uh, the, the harbor in Harbor Town was designed to save a single Liberty Oak, you know, Charles Frazier, and it's, we don't have mandatory recycling. I do believe that we should have, you know, competition, you know, if, you know, we should have a couple companies, you know, buying for the bid, not just one doing the mandatory recycling, but, 
If we're going to be that, you know, cutting edge beacon of shining light on the East Coast, we need to have mandatory recycling. It's Great. just a no-brainer. All right, Ryan McAvoy, you can learn more about him. And our next guest will be talking about recycling. We'll have Art Smith from Republic Services, who's going to be doing recycling on Hilton Head. Ryan, best wishes with your campaign. Thank you. I appreciate it. Stay with us.